Good day, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. This is Teams Global Hack Week 1. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everyone. We are so excited to be here. Another hackathon and the excitement is over the top. So we have amazing speakers today and we will dive into the tabs. We can't wait to get started. Totally. But first things first, let's do a quick recap. Let's look back. What did we do the last week? So last week on June 1, we kicked off the hackathon. It's a virtual event for all developers across the world to hack with apps for teams. We learned. Why would you build these apps? Like, can you even build apps for teams? Yes, you can. We learned all about them. Why would you do them? What is the uh, va value add? What uh, problems do they solve? And then we had another look into how our the developer tools help you build, build these apps, even to the point where you saw one of these apps being built live. So that was a great place to start, but don't worry. If you were in there, you missed it. We have a recording of that available for you to watch whenever you want. With that said, what do we have in plan for today? Okay, so Walter, before we jump into it, if someone first, is first. new to the Hackathon, let's introduce them to the Hackathon. Would you like to go ahead and do the introduction? What is Hack Together, the Microsoft Teams Global Hack? Exactly, right? So as we said, this is the Hackathon, which means you're supposed to hack. Let, let's learn by doing things, right? So we started on June 1, but it's not too late to join. You can join it any time you want. We will have live talks like the one uh, today in a minute or two. And then another important date for you to keep in mind, June 15, if you want your hack and you definitely want that, if you want it to make a chance to win a prize, submit it by the end of the day, Pacific time, June 15. Keep in mind, no matter how small your hack is, it matters, it counts. As, as long as it's a Teams apps, maybe you know you might not even get to the point where you want it to be. Maybe it doesn't do everything. Maybe you need to cut a few corners. That is perfectly fine. That is actually the nature of a hack. So whatever you've got, bring it in, submit it. You have nothing to lose. You can only win. Exactly. Couple of steps to keep in mind. Step one is register. If you don't register, you won't be eligible for the digital badge or other exciting prizes. Make sure to register first and then we will uh, jump into building apps. And if you submit, as Waldek mentioned, even the simplest app for teams, you will earn the digital badge. And then for the other prizes, we will look for more exciting categories and implementations. And the second place to be and the most important place to be for us is the GitHub repository. And this is the place where we have all the information about the important tutorials, important sample apps. We have templates. So everything is available here. Plus, we have discussions. So all the experts who are joining today in the session to, with us and also the other speakers who will be joining us the rest of the week, they will all be there answering your questions for um, throughout the week, throughout two weeks, and we will be there to help you the entire time. So don't forget to go to the GitHub repo, which will have all the info for us. Finally, exactly. the prizes, and then I will jump into the agenda. Valdek, would you like to go through exactly. the prizes? Exactly, the most exciting part, prizes, yes. right? So we have <laughs> a couple of cool things to give away, right? So we will look at all the different hacks that people, uh, you, su 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 submit. We'll look at the one that is best with regards to how it uses the power of a AI. AI is really big, like you cannot miss it no matter where you do. And we want to look at that. Like we want to see how creative you can get and what can you do with AI. So we will look at that as a one uh, type of hacks that you'll build. Another one is how can you help people do more? How can you help people achieve more, right? So we will look at that as an, another type of app that you could build. Overall, across all the different hacks that we will have, we will pick a grand prize winner who will win an Xbox and everybody on the team. So we accept teams up to four folks. I mean, you can hack with more, but only four folks from a team will be eligible for a prize. So uh, that is really up to you. Everybody on the winning team will get an Xbox and will get a $300 digital gift card. One more thing, this time around, we also have the European Collaboration Summit sponsor one of the um, categories too. And they will give away to, again, everybody on, on the team that they will pick, 
a C64, Commodore 64 retro computer, which is really, really cool. So it is definitely like one area that basically a wildcard that they pick. Like, hey, we really love this hack for a reason, right? So that team will get it too. And then finally, in the end, everybody who will submit a valid hack, valid hack meaning it is a team's app, that is it. Everybody who will submit a valid hack will get a digital badge. And that is really cool because that's kind of like you have an evidence to prove like you were in a hackathon and you built a team zip. You know how your way around it. So this is really, really cool thing uh, for you to basically get for the effort that you've done from us. Awesome prizes. I'm so excited to see the projects coming up and see what you build throughout the hackathon. And for today's agenda, before I jump into it, this session is live. So don't forget to engage in the chat. Let, let us know where you're joining from and ask your questions to the speakers throughout the session. We will be there to answer your questions uh, in the upcoming hour. And let's jump into the agenda of the day. We already done the hackathon overview and today we will start with introducing teams tabs and talk about what are teams tabs and afterwards we will have the introduction of sharepoint framework and how we can build teams tabs with sharepoint framework and then we will slide to wrap, wrap up the session and we will meet you again tomorrow for another session all right so should we get started going let's get started Okay, awesome. So I will invite my colleague Olivia over to speak about introduction to Teams apps. Hi, Olivia. Hello. Hi, Aicha. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm so excited. Me too. And before we jump into learning more about Teams tabs, I just want to get a little bit of introduction about you. I'm a big fan of your work. So over to you. <laughs> Well, likewise. So happy to be here. Hey, everyone. My name is Olivia Gazzardo. I am a cloud advocate here at Microsoft. Um, I am based in the US. Um, I live in Charleston, South Carolina, so I am on the coast. So very excited for some beach days this summer. Um, definitely want to connect with everyone here. So feel free to follow me on Twitter at Olivia Gazzardo. Um, I'm also available on LinkedIn, too, if you prefer to connect that way. Um, and as an advocate, I actually work on the VS Code team. It's an amazing team. Um, so I want to do a quick plug for some of our social media channels so you can connect with us. Um, so on Twitter and YouTube, we are available at Code. Um, on YouTube, we post weekly live streams. We post long form content like tutorials. And then we also post shorts that are kind of fun, quick tips and tricks, things like that. Um, we also cross post those on TikTok but our handle is at VS Code there. So if you're on TikTok, definitely follow us there as well. Um, and on the VS Code team, I'm so excited because I love developer tools. So VS Code, Codespaces, Copilot, all that just gets me so pumped. And I'm always so excited when I connect with other people and show you all what the power is with those developer tools. So I'm even more excited to be able to bring those tools to today's session where we're gonna be talking about Teams Tabs apps. Exactly. And I also want to highlight Olivia is a big expert on the tools and Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio, but it was for her time, first time trying out Teams Toolkit in the past week. And uh, she learned a lot throughout the testing and playing around. So we will see her doing the live demo uh, in the session. I'm so excited to see that because it was your first experience as well. Um, and let, let's jump into it. Before we um, jump into Olivia's exciting uh, Teams tabs demo, I want to do a quick re recap. Last week, we had a great keynote delivered by Archana, Amanda, and also John. They, they gave us brief information. What are the capabilities and features we can build for Microsoft Teams? And these capabilities are mainly around bots, message extensions, uh, and tabs. And today, we will be diving slightly more into the tabs area, and we will show you what are tabs in the first place. If you never heard of them, don't worry about it. This is the right session for you. And also we will dive a little deeper and learn how we can leverage from SharePoint framework. And we will have the experts speak about it. Okay, so let me do an introduction about Teams tabs and use cases for it. Teams tabs are actually web apps, web pages 
but they are Teams aware, meaning that you can run tabs on Microsoft Teams. If you have a, a web page, you can embed your web page into Teams and you can use, you can leverage your web page as a Teams app. And Teams apps work in different uh, places, for example, you can use Teams tabs as a part of a channel inside a team on Microsoft Teams. You can also use your tab and Teams Aware web page inside a group chat, as well as you can use your tab inside the personal app for uh, an in individual use. So it depends on what kind of app you want to build and you can build it from scratch or bring your existing web app into it. And these are these tabs are actually working just like another web app. So you have to host, uh, host the endpoint somewhere like cloud and uh, potentially for us it's Azure. And we like to uh, host the endpoint in the cloud and then also keep the tab on Microsoft Teams so we can leverage from our web pages inside Microsoft T Teams without uh, making a lot of switch back and forth. So what is the best way to get started? Um, if you are interested in getting started and how you can build Teams apps, I highly recommend you to catch up with the on-demand uh, recording of the last week's keynote where we have the get started version on Teams Toolkit. Teams Toolkit is the great place to get started for us and also our documentation. We have a great documentation which shows us how to get started. And now Teams Toolkit is also available on Code Spaces, which is Olivia's expert area. And today we will just go to the documentation and try to run our first Teams tab using Code Spaces and then see if it works or not. And then we will try to change and play around with the code a little bit. And then we will hand over to the other experts to dive even deeper. Okay, without further ado, less talking, more coding. Olivia, should we jump into your demo? <laughs> okay, let's do it. Um, and yes, like I just said, um, I'm gonna be walking through this documentation to create this Hello World basic tab app. Um, and I really was a beginner. Like this isn't just some bit we're doing for this demo. <laughs> Last week when Aicha <laughs> asked me to do this, I was just like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, I'll do it, but I've never done this before. And let me tell you, I went through this process. It was so seamless. Um, so I'm really excited to show you all of this so that you can also get started really quickly and not be all wide eyed when you're like, how the heck am I supposed to do this? <laughs> um, awesome. Okay. So this is that documentation um, that I just showed um, and gave the aka.ms link to. So you can definitely try this out on your own. Um, but we are going to get started with this app in a GitHub code space. So I'm just going to click this button right here to create a new code space. Um, and we're going to create a new code space here. Um, and just if y'all aren't familiar with code spaces, I'll do a quick background. Um, but basically what's going to happen is a code space is a development environment hosted in the cloud. So it's really, really handy anytime you're getting started with a new project. Um, because it's going to have all of your development environment configured for you. Um, I know learning new technologies and learning new languages is already daunting enough. Um, so there's no point in also making it harder on yourself by having to configure your environment as well. Um, so this is where code space is really handy because you can literally just click a button and then your environment is up and running in the cloud super easily. Um, and if you notice in the previous screen, it said, um, this code space is paid for by me. Um, you know, it's going to show your username there. Um, that's totally fine though, because everyone gets, I believe it's 60 hours of free code spaces. Um, so that's really awesome because you can go ahead and play around with this for free. You do not have to pay for this up to a certain amount of usage. So really great there. Um, okay. So we can see this is loading. A lot of things are happening here. Actually, let me go ahead and just bump the screen a little bit so you all can see it a little bit better on your screens. Um, and you'll notice right now that this looks like VS Code and that's because it is VS Code. Um, code spaces are really awesome because they get powered up and then you can interface with it through VS Code either through the browser, which is what we're doing right here, um, or you can do it in the desktop if you prefer that. So if you're already familiar with VS Code, it's a really great experience because it's going to look exactly like how you already interface with your development environment, but now it's hosted in the cloud. So you get that really great power and that really great configuration there. Um, okay, so it looks like we are just about spun up here. It's finishing this run post create command. So it's doing the last part there, but we can already see a lot of configuration that's happened here. 
And we already have this Teams Toolkit pa uh, panel available to us in the activity bar. Um, so Aisha, I think you probably went over this in some of the previous sessions, but do you wanna just give a quick overview of what's available to people in the Teams Toolkit? Exactly, let's do it. So Teams Toolkit is an extension for Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Currently, Olivia is running Code Spaces, which has the Teams Toolkit extension already installed. But if you want to try this out on your desktop, you will have to install the extension from the ex extensions market space. And when you click on the Teams Toolkit tab, you will see accounts, which is the place if you want to um, run your app and preview on Microsoft Teams, you will have to sign in with Microsoft 365, which will um, initially uh, preview your app on the account that you sign in. And um, I think Olivia is going to sign yep. in. <laughs> that seems like a good, a good opportunity for me to start doing it. <laughs> okay. And if you don't have these accounts and if you don't have the rights to test out on Teams with your maybe work account, school account, don't worry about it. The second button on the right that Olivia clicked instead of sign in, you can go and create your free developer account in Microsoft 365 developer program. And this will generate you a free demo account where you will be the admin of the tenant and you can do all the testing. And Olivia is using actually one of the demo tenants from the Microsoft 365 developer program. Awesome. Thanks for the overview, Aicha. Um, but yeah, very easy to get set up. Um, and there is all documentation here too if you're trying to figure out how you can get going with this Teams school toolkit easily. Um, so cool. I'm signed in now. Um, so we'll go over the app a little bit, but I just want to show you, um, as I just said, you can preview your Teams app just from within here. Um, so you can either hit the F5 key or just click this preview your team's app. Um, and then it's going to pop up two options. So it's going to have preview and code spaces or launch remote. Um, I'm going to select preview, but I do you want to go over what the launch remote option is as well? Yeah, so preview will launch a new web, um, a new tab in the browser, which will log in uh, already with your logged in account of Microsoft 365. So you will see a Teams tab, uh, sorry, Teams um, web web page where you will have your account already, and then your tab will be popping up. Um, after the initial uh, setups that Teams Toolkit will be doing. And Launch Remote will be using your remote desktop. But if you're a starter and if you're using code spaces, I think preview option is really straightforward where you just click and then it will pop another tab on your browser once all the setup is done. And you don't have to do any setup on your end. As you can see uh, on the output side, Teams Toolkit is dealing with all of the registrations of Azure Active Directory, um, and if you're building a bot, for example, it's all, it also handles the bot framework registration. So pretty much all of the setup is done by Teams Toolkit and the rest for us is just changing the code and um, playing around, around a little bit. And I think that's a great get started thing um, because yeah. Teams Toolkit provides. <laughs> it's been absolutely amazing. Um, and I mean, like I said, right, I was a complete beginner um, and it does just do kind of everything for you. Um, and even if we look, uh, at the source code a little bit. Again, I was kind of like, okay, well, you probably have to do a lot of crazy things for this to work. Um, <laughs> but if you look at the source code, it's basically just a React app. Um, so it's made up of components. Um, I know if there's anything you want to call out, definitely let me know. Um, yeah. But going in here, basically, I'm like, oh, if we look at some of this code, so this is the welcome page. I'm like, wait, I know, I know this language. <laughs> I know how to make a React app. Um, so it really is, I can just be, the developer that I already am and bring it into Teams so seamlessly. Um, and it's it's been a great experience so far. And you can see already we're kind of almost at the end point here. Um, so it, speed, it uh, uh, turns up really quickly. Um, and then it will go ahead and pop open that tab as well. Um, yeah. But if we want to, think... oh, go ahead, Aicha. Now, I think that's the best offering uh, from Teams, especially for tabs. If you have existing web app development skills, I think you will be familiar of the code a lot because this is uh, pretty much like a React app. It is actually a React app in the end. Uh, so Olivia, if you have experience with React, um, you can just start with VS Code. And if you are a .NET developer, for example, if you know Blazor, you can actually go to Visual Studio and you can install the extension for Visual Studio. And then the same tab app will be in the base of Blazor uh, web app. So um, it's pretty much built for your existing experiences instead of teaching you something new from scratch. 
Yeah, I'm actually very excited to try out the Blazor experience too, because previously I was um, in the .NET development space. So I'm very excited to try that out as well. <laughs> but we'll focus on uh, the code spaces VS Code uh, uh, experience for now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm assuming uh, the Teams tab will pop up in a second. Yeah, I think we're, there we yes. go. It's like you summoned it, Aicha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's just gonna ask me to authentic authenticate, but um, I'm skipping that for now. Um, okay, so we can see it automatically popped open that Teams um, new browser tab. Um, and when it does that, it prompts me to add this Hello World tab local app. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. So this is the app that's in the code that we're running right now. Um, and it's going to take just a couple seconds to add that. Um, but you can see this is a full, right? This is my entire test team's experience. Um, once it's added, we will see our personal tab that loads here. Loading. Let's see if it will do it. I know. <laughs> I know. I feel like we need um, like Jeopardy music or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. But yeah, and then you can also always monitor everything that's going on here. So it'll have output and everything like that. Um, in uh, So if you accidentally close your tab or anything, it will also have the um, URL open to available. So you can open that Teams tab again. Um, looks like it's just kind of establishing a connection. So we'll give that just a second. Yeah, the, the, as you can see already, so we have a tab on the top by giving the name tab, personal tab. And then the rest of the UI is just like embedded experience, uh, but it is your web app actually. So you can build custom experiences for Teams apps, but you can also bring your existing Teams app. Oops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this, is, this is the fun of live demos, isn't it? <laughs> I know, yeah, I was it's expecting because when that. we tried this a couple hours ago, it's worked. <laughs> I know. I know. This is what always happens, though, isn't it? <laughs> but hey, this is the real experience, right? Um, so maybe let's go ahead and try to stop it and restart and see if that tricks it into knowing what's going on. Um, and then while we do that, we can go ahead and walk through the code a little bit more um, yeah. to do that. So I'm just going to hit that F5 key again. Um, so again, that's going to rebuild it. So fingers crossed this is good. Yeah. but. Hey, <laughs> this always happens when live streaming. I know <laughs> this is the real experience, y'all. <laughs> this is, I mean, when I say that this is all, you know, we're we're not uh, uh, pretending to be. I'm not pretending to be a beginner or anything like that. Um, this is all the real experience. So um, we'll troubleshoot yeah. this together. So that way, if you run yeah. into the same issue, you'll see it as well. While we're trying to run the app from scratch, I want to highlight and answer one of the questions we got in the chat. Is that um, so where do we start in the code? I think it's important that we can highlight in the source folder, as Olivia mentioned, this is the place where we start. And tab.jsx is the place that we have our tab. And then the rest of them are just components, for example, that we directly go to welcome component, where we have some code inside and we can have multiple other components here as um, other sections, other tabs too, like publish and um, Azure and so on. And you can build up on top of it. You just need to change your UI in the tab.jsx and then it will appear on the page. Okay. I have a good feeling about this one. I do too. I do too. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> All right. And then we should go through that ad process again. And let's see what happens. Um, but yeah, and just while that's adding, um, as Aicha was saying, so um, it's then built of components. So you can see, for example, this publish is pulling from this publish page. Um, and so that's going to be how it loads. And so once we kind of see this get added, ooh, looks like we're still getting that bad gateway. Hmm. All right. Well, that's a, let me see if I can get to the, we're at the port at all, just so we can view this, but it's probably going to be the bad gateway as well. Live debugging. I know. <laughs> <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> oh, server's temporarily unavailable. Hmm. 
All right, we might just have to go through the code a little more, but the good news is you all can always try this out too on this documentation. Yeah. Um, and it, we seem to be just hitting a little speed bump right now, <laughs> but and let um, us know it works. <laughs> right to run before. Yeah. Um, so we'll let that, that spin for a little bit. Um, yeah. but, but maybe I try, if you want to go through and just mention maybe if people wanted to create this from scratch, what would they do to kind of make their own teams top app? So, um, by the way, I'm assuming this issue might be a network issue too, since we're yeah, live and you're be. sharing your screen. Mm -hmm. um, but you, we are supposed to see the screen where we have our welcome page and pretty much like paragraphs and uh, so on, nothing really fancy. And if let's say uh, that you, you, you want to change the code, you can go ahead and, and make the changes directly in your code. And afterwards, if you want to publish your app, you're going to have to host your app on the cloud like Azure, for example, for us, you can also do that in the Teams toolkit where we have the life cycle. You can actually provision your app and uh, which will create a, a tab for you. And then you can deploy and publish. Deploy means that you can deploy your app to the cloud, Azure, through Teams toolkit. And then you can publish your app to uh, Microsoft Teams store or your internal uh, tenant so that everyone can use your tab. So when you first initiate your app on uh, Teams uh, by using Teams toolkit, this will be running locally. So no one will have access to it on your uh, organization. But when you're done, you obviously want to share your app uh, with your organization. Then you are going to have to provision, deploy, and publish to do all the life cycle. And your app will be on the cloud. Uh, just uh, It will be hosted on, on the web app service. And it will be just running like another web app for us on Azure. And then once it's published, then you can share it with anyone in your team's organization, right? Yeah, exactly, awesome. exactly. And um, I know that we got that error, but I also want to highlight one other thing where uh, when you're changing code, Olivia has a great trick, great extension. Maybe we can just show that. Yeah, um, absolutely. If it doesn't yeah. work, it doesn't work. But yeah, if it doesn't work, then so be it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mentioned, you know, I love developer tools. Um, so one of my favorite pairings is Codespaces and Copilot. Um, so GitHub Copilot, if y'all aren't familiar with it already, um, is going to be basically your own AI pair programmer. Um, so it's really handy because it's going to make code suggestions for you. Um, so you're still in control, but as you're typing, it will make little nice ghost text suggestions for you. Um, and it uses your code context. So that way it's actually making really relevant suggestions. Um, so for example, if we just wanna go into this welcome page again, and let's say I just wanna add another paragraph here. Um, I can start typing um, and we will see, you see this ghost text right here, that's Copilot. Um, so it's saying, hey, do you wanna add a paragraph? And yeah, that's exactly what I wanna do. Um, and you can see it even knows like what class name to set it as um, based off of the other styles of the paragraphs. Um, and it recommends writing, you can now edit your code, deploy to the cloud and publish to Teams um, and then closing that paragraph there. Um, so this is really showing that context. Let me actually make that code a little bigger. That's making this context really apparent because this is a very relevant paragraph, right? It didn't just add some sort of random um, uh, paragraph there. It said, hey, you're talking about Teams. Let's go ahead and add this here. Um, so if we save that, I think we're probably still just kind of spinning. Um, yeah, One of the cool this. things about Teams Toolkit is that we have hot loading. Um, yeah. you, you can see that in this demo, but uh, in the following demos, you, you, you might see it. When Olivia adds that line of code, we, when we uh, save the code, uh, it directly appears on your app, so you don't have to stop and start running again. Uh, so you can make changes in your app, debug it, and uh, thanks to hot loading, you will actually have to mm -hmm. uh, see it the changes right away on your app. Yeah, definitely. And I love that. And it will actually, I wish I could show you here, um, but basically you'll even know that it's reloading because you'll get a little notification in the terminal saying recompiling, recompiling um, every single time you write. So you kind of know, hey, my changes are there and it knows what's happening. Um, yeah. Yeah, bummer so, about the, the demo. I know we're almost at time for this demo, um, but I definitely you know want everyone to go ahead and try this out because it is a really, really great experience. 
Yeah. And let us know if it works for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we, will, we will have other demos in the session and uh, we will see different types of tabs in the session. So don't worry about it. But definitely Olivia's uh, code space documentation is the best place to get started. And it works really straightforward, even though we couldn't make it in the live stream. You will see that it is really easy to do when you try it out. Yeah. When and it that, works, it's perfection. <laughs> Yeah, and I also want to highlight thanks, Olivia, for showing us all the goodness of the tools like Copilot, because as a starting point, uh, you definitely need some suggestions as a developer, and Copilot is a great uh, extension to get started coding, especially if you're new in the space. Let's say you've never built React Web App before, or you've never built Blazor App before. I think Codespace, uh, Copilot gives you great suggestions when building your app. Absolutely. Yeah. I love the developer tools. It's all about making the experience for y'all as seamless as possible. Um, so definitely try this out with code spaces so you can be spun up quickly um, and install Copilot. So that way you can get those code suggestions and be up and running in no time. Thank you so much, Olivia, for joining us today. And Thank for the you. next session, we want to hand over back to Waldeck and we want to welcome Bessa. Yay! Hey, sir. Hey, Waldek. Such a long time. This is like the fifth meeting, so meeting of the day. Oh, we are live, actually. This is not a meeting. Now, um, <laughs> just just uh, messing with you. Now, uh, uh, quick intros, I guess, is, is how we do this. Right, Waldek? Yes, You're the host definitely. this time, so you need to, you know. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to all 900 VESA, the Microsoft yes. switchboard. <laughs> So my name is Ezra Wood, and I'm a principal product manager in Microsoft 365 areas. And I, I do a lot of community stuff, uh, coordinate stuff for, across Microsoft Teams and, and SharePoint and Outlook and Graph and a lot of other stuff as well. I've been in, in Microsoft for quite a few years. Uh, I'm not luckily bold yet, even though that picture kind of uh, implies that. So anyway, uh, is, there, I'm in is, 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 is there something you actually don't do? <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, good question. <laughs> and I'm also on Twitter at Vesa uh, If you want to follow the things, we're sharing a lot of, lot of stuff. What people are building actually uh, as a team tabs in Teams Toolkit or as the other extensibility points within a Microsoft 365. Now, in this case, uh, we wanted to talk about the SharePoint framework. Um, and this, if you're not familiar with SharePoint framework, it, it might be like SharePoint, a what? Um, because SharePoint might have a a bit of a negative echo on it. The naming is actually misleading. Um, and the SharePoint framework um, basically is exactly what Olivia and Aisha were showing you, created, uh, uh, related on creating those application, but it enable, and you can use React and Angular, whatever you want, Amber, whatever is your chosen uh, JavaScript framework. SharePoint framework, however, hosts your solution automatically. So basically, the key advantage of the SharePoint framework is that it's, it could be named as Microsoft 365 or the hosted apps. So what it means is that your solution, which you built and implemented using React or whatever is your chosen framework, is automatically and, by the way, freely hosted in Microsoft 365 as part of the tenant, as part of the deployment. So, and the SharePoint framework actually works in Microsoft Teams, it works in Outlook, it works in Microsoft 365 app, of course, it works in SharePoint as well. And you can use exactly the same piece of code across all of these solutions. So rather than implementing a specific solution for Teams, specific solution for SharePoint, specific solution for Microsoft Viva, you can reuse the same piece of code across the thing. And that's actually pretty sweet. Uh, we, we've been live with SharePoint framework for quite a few years. Uh, people are still like confusing. If you don't come from a SharePoint background, you might be like, well, why, why, why SharePoint? Think about it as all the hosted Microsoft 365 apps, and then you can still integrate with Azure with Azure Functions and all of that stuff. Um, but even in the chat, as we were watching the chat during the presentation, this is not, by the way, not recorded. So this is a proof that this is not recorded. Somebody was asking that, okay, so I created the Teams app. Where is it now hosted? And here's your answer. It can be hosted by Microsoft 365, and that's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so again, cost efficiency, but you can still take advantage of the Microsoft uh, Azure and all of the cloud uh, capabilities. The single, uh, automatic single sign-on, automatic hosting, consistent dev experience, and what it means is that one is that it's a web stack development experience uh, across the whole Microsoft 365 setup. 
uh, let's go to the following slide. I will ask, uh, give you a chance, Waldek, to <laughs> jump out questions in a second. <laughs> Perfect. But uh, so this is <laughs> yes. <laughs> But this is kind of a recap on the following slide, but a bit about the, the different shapes and extensibility points. So obviously the, the name of SPF Action SharePoint Framework comes from SharePoint, and that's where it started. Already back in 2018, you were able to start creating personal apps and team apps using SharePoint Framework for Microsoft Teams. Um, and that's actually pretty cool. So you can use exactly the same code without any code changes uh, within the Microsoft Teams. So every single web part which you implemented for SharePoint is actually a Microsoft Teams app. Or if you created so, a Microsoft Teams, you can actually uh, use that in SharePoint as well. So it works so either it, way. So, so in other words, you're trying to say that we've been building for Teams already for a long time. We just we were building for Teams. We're not aware of doing that. That's actually a great way of doing that. Yeah, absolutely. So really very cool. And now with the, the latest versions and, and with the new cool setup uh, that the Microsoft Teams apps are, can be actually used in Outlook and Microsoft 365 app, which is the office.com, renamed office.com. Uh, uh, it's basically extended in there as well. So again, really, really cool reusability of the code. And, and one of the key points, what we always want to do with this, and this is what our leadership always keeps on recapping, is that we don't want to introduce necessarily a new development models. We want to make sure that your existing investments are providing maximized value. Um, you can take the existing code and just extend it in the Microsoft Teams. And that's pretty, pretty cool. Now, let's actually have a look on how does that work in practice? That's good. Let's see some code. Yes, let's, let's see some code. code. So this is a hackathon for developers Correct. who want to see code. I yes. speak right. on, on the behalf of the audience who are developers. Let's see some code. Yes, absolutely. So what we're going to do today is that we're going to use Teams Toolkit. Um, you can actually SharePoint Framework as it's an older than the Teams Toolkit. You can actually use it the other way around as well, but Teams Toolkit integrates directly with SharePoint Framework as well. So you can as well easily use that. And then the advantage again is that you, you don't need to worry about, um, for example, in your customer deployment, where do I get this code to be then running? Hey, customer, can I set up an Azure website to your tenant. No, you can't. Oh, OK. Uh, then we have a problem. Now, if you're a SaaS or ISV provider, or if you're a SaaS application, have a website already where people go, of course, SharePoint Framework is not then for you. We want to surface your existing solution within the Microsoft Teams. Um, but if you're looking into, uh, 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 for example, tenant by tenant deployments, it's a great option because there's simplicity and no additional cost. Now, let me actually create a new app here. Um, uh, I think I zoomed in enough uh, and we can select the time. And in here, we can actually say, uh, select the SPFX as the option, uh, SPFX being in SharePoint Framework. It's a bit hidden, but it's fine. Uh, and build UI with SharePoint Framework. Uh, it is the auto hosted uh, Microsoft 365 applications. And I'm going to go through the baseline creation of the solution. Uh, in the version five, if you are familiar with all of the different version, it actually gives you the option to use either a local version or global version, which is pretty cool. So you can actually do different versions of the SharePoint framework. Um, in our case, let's use the global one. And then I can say, what is my starting point? And we do provide starting points, project templates for React and a minimal and none. And none is basically no JavaScript uh, framework, uh, but it's JavaScript TypeScript. So there's no specific framework compliant. Um, you can select the none and then integrate that with Angular or Amber or whatever is your chosen uh, truck uh, in that case. In our case, we could just act, uh, create the React. I'm not going to create it in right now because it takes a while to run the npm install uh, and we're going to want to save the time uh, for something else. What I wanted to actually show you, uh, what do you get out of the, the uh, creation? So here we go. Here's my uh, absolutely awesome app. In this case, I selected uh, no JavaScript or no, no framework, no JavaScript, which is no JavaScript framework, I think, is the option. <laughs> uh, but I basically created the tab. And you can see that it's, it's TypeScript. Uh, it could be a React if you choose the React option. It could be just TypeScript without the React option. And, and this is, anybody can read this. This is web stack development. Uh, whatever reason, the refreshing, even though NPM install was executed, and that didn't go away. Again, let's not worry about that too much. Uh, but basically, it's HTML, TypeScript development. Uh, everything is controlled. Uh, we can easily access, for example, the Microsoft Teams SDK directly from the context and then we can say or detect am I in office am I in outlook am I in teams and based on that I can change my behavior uh, which is really really cool again we have multiple options now the cool thing about the teams toolkit 
is that it actually gives you great, great development experience across the Teams and Outlook and Microsoft 365 AM. And let's show that this is actually live. So let's do a quick query and ask uh, from the chat in the comments, whoever actually answers this first. And do we want to do debugging in Teams, Outlook, or Microsoft 365 app? I'm going to give you five oh. seconds. Do we have an answer? Do we have an answer? Do we want to do, do debugging in Teams, Outlook, or Microsoft 365? Uh, I will choose let's Outlook. Do Outlook. Let's, let's do Outlook. Outlook. We, okay. we have no answer, so let, let's go with Outlook. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no, maybe this is recorded uh, and we're just acting. You never know. Now I'm going to okay, press then, play. Then do teams. Um, <laughs> I teams. Just oh, we have answers. Button. We we have two answers for teams. Oh, delay. Now the 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 kind of a, a bit of a confusing thing here is that this is Teams Hackathon. Now, Waldek, why why is the Outlook here? What does that? Wait, also, what? that is this interesting thing. Uh, we mentioned it, I believe, already. That recently we introduced the ability for you to expose Teams apps to Outlook and the Microsoft 365 app, and that is really cool. Because imagine now that you build a Teams app. And your app is only available in Teams. Well, now for anybody to be able to use your app, they first need to go to Teams to open the app. What if they are in Outlook? Where the cool thing is that now with that, you can build your app again once and then have your app follow the user rather than the user following the app. So this is really, really cool. Yep. And here we are. We are loading stuff in Outlook. Here we go. I do have a breakpoint actually waiting on behind on, on the back there. Uh, just to show that it's catching up. Uh, this is a typical thing because we are loading stuff from local host. Uh, I will say load debug script. And voila, we are hitting the breakpoint in behind of the scenes. And that's actually pretty, pretty cool, isn't it? So we basically yes. did no changes. And this is exactly what you get from a default scaffolding. I'll just select that debugging enabled. And now it's enabled. Let's get rid of that one. Let's play the, the game all the way through. Let's go back in it here. And we can actually see the, the default rendering of a SharePoint framework web part um, or SharePoint framework solution in Outlook. So it is basically a Teams tab, which is implemented using SharePoint framework, which means Microsoft 365 or the hosted solution. And we, of course, can access things like, hey, are you, are we are running in Outlook. Uh, that's the property. Here's my name. Apparently, my name is M365 Dev. There we go. Of course you are. Yes. Today, I'm M365 Dev. Now, but that, that's actually really cool. So really, really simple way of doing debugging and execution. And again, the beauty of SharePoint Framework, I can just package this, package this and the packaging model is actually a zip file. And I can send it to Waldeck or my customer and say, install that to your tenant. And it works. Like, and just I will like install that. it. And I, and I will, because I trust you. <laughs> That's a good point as well. Maybe maybe I should not trust random people sending you zip files and say it in Statue Atena. But technically, the packaging is automatic. Um, so you don't need to worry about, again, the enterprise customer complexity on, no, 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 no. Are you saying that we need to deploy an Azure website and Azure functions and all of that stuff? No, no, we don't. You have full access on Microsoft Graph APIs, Microsoft 365 APIs directly from the SharePoint framework code. And single sign-on works uh, seamlessly. And that's actually really, really cool. It, it simplifies deployment mechanism. Now, from a timing perspective, we're going to keep the flow. Um, and I'm speaking English as fast as I can. I can switch to Finnish as well, if you want. And it will be even faster. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably I'm actually nowadays faster in English than in Finnish. Uh, anyway, so uh, I'm based in Finland for those who are like, why, why, why are they what? Um, so why would you actually implement SharePoint Framework for Microsoft Teams? And again, uh, you uh, can surface um, all your solutions directly in the in the same location where the uh, users are. So your users can easily access the information. You can use the same solution in Microsoft Viva, in SharePoint, in Microsoft Teams, or in Outlook or Microsoft 365, like we saw uh, previously. And that's pretty, pretty cool. Exactly the same experience there. It's automatic signal sign-on for users. So you don't need to worry about anything like that. Uh, it's just automatically works because it's detecting the user and it's using the context of the user from an execution, uh, execution perspective. Um, and it it's the automatic optimized hosting, which is for sure reducing costs um, and complexity. And if you still need to hit an Azure function and Azure APIs and all of that stuff, you can 100%, you still can. 100% completely seamless authentication as well, which is really, really cool. Now, let's actually uh, talk about 
speed and bound, the latest status with SPFX for Microsoft Teams before we go another demo uh, in the journey. So SPFX 1.17.x, 1.17.3 is the latest version right now. It uses Teams SDK 2.9.1, super specific numbers. But basically what it means is that you can use even the share SDK within the SharePoint framework uh, solutions when you are deploying them to the tenant. Um, you can either provide your custom Teams manifest or the engine will auto-generate even the manifest for you based on what you have in the package. That is an interesting option as well, if you're, especially for you know, baseline debugging and testing and validation. Um, you can let Microsoft 365 auto-generate uh, the manifest file as part of the deployment, which is actually really, really cool. And of course, like mentioned quite a few times already, all of the SPFX solutions for Teams are also available in Outlook and Microsoft 365 app. Now, what's cool about this one is, is Getting the solution work in the Microsoft Teams is zero lines, extra lines of code. You don't need to do any changes on the code. It will just work in SharePoint, in Microsoft Teams, in Microsoft 365, and in Outlook, and also in mobile. Of course, you have to take into account the mobile device differences within the, the resolution uh, within your mobile, but that's actually natively supported by SharePoint Framework as well. Um, so even though we call it as a SharePoint Framework, it could be called as Microsoft 365 for the hosted apps or whatever, whatever we would be more suitable for it. Um, one of the reasons why we haven't renamed uh, SharePoint Framework, it has been discussed so many times, is quite simply the, the, the long-term usage of it. And so we don't want to confuse people by introducing a new name uh, because that might actually cause confusion uh, rather than being a benefit. And SharePoint powers Microsoft Teams, it powers Outlook, it powers uh, Microsoft 365 app. Behind of the scenes, uh, SharePoint is powering a lot of this other stuff as well. So even though it might have a weird echo for whatever intranets, that's not necessarily always the case. Of course, you can build the intranets with SharePoint framework as well, but that's a separate discussion. Now, uh, let's then have a quick look on as recapped uh, on the Microsoft Teams v5. You can do a really cool debugging. Uh, just seriously, one click on the on the selection and debugging just works uh, in Microsoft 365 app or in Outlook or in Teams. Super, super sweet, super, super easy. You can do this uh, by yourself as well. So if you're more familiar with uh, command line tooling and you want to control that pipeline by yourself, yes, you can do that as well. So because behind of the scenes, uh, Teams Toolkit v5 is using the Yeoman generator for SharePoint Framework and the tooling what SharePoint Framework has using behind of the scenes. So again, we want to make sure sure that anybody who has been already previously invested on SharePoint Framework and building experiences for SharePoint, as an example, they can reuse exactly the same solutions across the stack. And that's actually really, really cool as well. Now, consistency, cost efficiency, reusability, uh, and reliability uh, is, is for sure uh, the key points uh, within here. Now, let's have a look on what does this mean in practice. So if we have an existing SharePoint web part. You might not be familiar what is a SharePoint web part, but it's a it's a you build a SharePoint web part and experience uh, with a SharePoint framework. And let's have a look on how easily we can extend that to be in Teams or in Outlook or in Microsoft 365 app. Um, and this is, by the way, by far, I would say, would it be the, fair to say the easiest hackathon project as well? Have you built anything on SharePoint framework as a web part? Guess what? Every single web part is a Teams app. Shh. It's basically a secret that we don't want to let anybody in on. So, oh, that's true. Like, yes. On, that's true. Only, only our friends in this call know, right? <laughs> that's true. That is true. Now, let's start with this example. So first of all, um, I'm going to do two samples. We still have, I think I have like uh, eight minutes. So that should be good. Uh, so let me go in uh, this screen. And let's go in here. And we can actually see this productivity hub. Productivity hub is a relatively simple, it's incredibly simple SharePoint framework uh, solution, which is using Microsoft Craft behind the scenes. This is seriously 30 lines of code, but it's incredibly powerful. Uh, it just shows the, in the integration and simplicity of SharePoint framework with the Microsoft Graph and Microsoft Craft toolkit. This experience, which is dynamically surfacing my following tasks, um, I have a pretty open autumn, which is really great. Um, so it's basically eight lines of code, roughly, within my solution. Let's have a look on that. Um, so let me go to my solution and to Productivity Hub. Um, again, we can see that it's React-based, uh, kind of a react styled uh, TypeScript. And what we're doing here is that we're taking advantage of the uh, 
uh, Microsoft Craft Toolkit, we are defining our HTML structure, and then we have the Microsoft Craft Toolkit things here. That's it. That's the only thing which actually gives us a personal productivity hub where we can see the following agenda items, to do the list, and file list. That's now, really cool. The most interesting thing here is that now that we have this implementation, the existing implementation of the code, the only thing that I need to add to make that web part to be available in Teams is to select uh, the different supported hosts in my uh, JSON file. The JSON file, this is a manifest file. It basically says, hey, this is a web part, this is the title, this is the description. And then it says, where do we want to support this in Microsoft 365? Done. Just two attributes or add an attribute in here, and it works in Microsoft Teams. And what it means in practice is that same TypeScript implementation, which everybody can write TypeScript, right, is now available to get then extended or visible in here. And in let's go to the Productivity Hub. Let's see. Loading, 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 loading. And that is now in Teams, right? There we so go. we had we had somebody asking about, like, can we show the app in Teams? Well, there you go. Yes. There is your. There we go. SharePoint framework based web part as displayed as a Teams personal tab. Yes, absolutely. In Teams. In Teams. So now we could either do, oh, uh, not that one. Let's actually get that one in a second. That's the web part in the, the SharePoint. Of course, the same web part in Teams. And of course, uh, which is really, very really cool. I can, of course, access the same web part on the Microsoft 365 um, uh, side as well. Uh, I can pin it on the left side about whatever we want to do. And there we go, the same productivity dashboard, eight lines of code. And I can always ask, access my upcoming events, my to-do tasks, my files. Of course, we could integrate emails and a lot of other stuff here. And again, what was it? Eight lines of code, roughly. And the beauty yeah. of, again, this is I can package the solution I can send it to uh, Waldeck and you do not add, as long as you have access on your tenant, you don't need to have access even on Azure and no approval, uh, no, no complexity of the hosting. Uh, of course, you need to approve the API permissions, but still uh, uh, in the accessing the graph APIs, but it's incredibly simple to package and reuse the same piece of code across the customers and sell it forward. Now, the other example, what I wanted to actually show is a bit more complicated. So this one is a pretty cool sample. Uh, it's a, a dashboard or retail sales uh, experience, which is originally uh, a, a web part in SharePoint. Um, it renders a say dynamic dashboard in here, quite typical scenario actually, because um, in classically SharePoint has been the intranet you know, hosting scenario. We have tens of millions of monthly active users uh, in SharePoint using custom SPFX components, tens of millions. Of course, there are hundreds of millions SharePoint users uh, online, but uh, tens of millions who are using custom SPFX components. And we want this same component to be then visible in Microsoft Teams. What were the rules and what were the steps? Well, we actually went them through already. So let me go to the Contos Retail uh, solution. Here we are again, it's TypeScript web stack development. This is a bit more complicated. We actually introduce a few more additional tabs uh, because we want to have a more fine-tuned experience within the Microsoft Teams. And then uh, we basically get uh, added uh, that solution to be available as a Teams personal app and a Teams tab. That's it. That was the code chains. Adding two attributes or one attribute in the JSON file. And what it actually then means is that the same experience, the same solution, let me go in here, is in Microsoft Teams. We can, of course, pin it, we can deploy that, we can control the visibility, we can access that. In our case, we also added a few additional complexity and a few nice uh, presentation, a few additional tabs. We also added some inventory details on it, so I can actually select the product and get the details out of the, that particular thing. So a really complex, uh, awesome aggregation of LOB data and information directly in a visual uh, way directly in Microsoft Teams. Really, really cool uh, implementation. And this is a SharePoint framework powered uh, experience, but there's really not that much difference. Again, it's a matter of how preference, to which option do you use? Now, the same solution, of course, is, is absolutely 100% available in the Microsoft 365 app. So we can access the Contoso retails in here. Uh, 
and it loads exactly the same. Um, and as the Microsoft Teams tabs um, and Teams apps are now available in here, it behaves exactly like the Microsoft Teams app. And of course, it works in the uh, Outlook as well. So you can access the same information and experiences. And behind of the scenes, of course, the solution is aware. Now I'm being accessed through Outlook, so I could start doing something else within an Outlook specific things if needed. But if nothing else, um, your business information is easily accessible across to Microsoft 365. And that's basically uh, it from my side. So just from a timing perspective, and uh, that's a kind of a quick teaser. We will actually go through implementation details about the Contoso retail demo uh, in our community calls, which are happening every single week. Uh, so we are uh, actually tomorrow at 8 a.m. Pacific time. We're going to go through that. Um, I actually have a one more slide. Sorry, uh, I should have actually. Thank you uh, for the uh, for the production. So basically. The key call to action here is that your web parts um, and your existing investments are actually web parts are Microsoft Teams apps. So you can reuse exactly the same code to be available across the Microsoft 365. And it's fully auto hosted and capable uh, to be used. But that's it for, for now uh, from this side. And again, we'll talk about more uh, all of the technical details and implementation details in the community call. This sample, by the way, is open source. I'm going to put the sample uh, sample uh, code location uh, in the chat right after I will drop away from the screen. Um, so you can access the code, you can access the information, you can recompile the code and just start using that uh, as your starting point. Uh, so we'll put that one on the chat right now after this one. Perfect. But thank you, Walter, thank for the you. invite. Thank you so much. This was really, really cool. And it's, if anything else, it's really cool to see, you know, the, the simplicity and ease. How can you build a web part? And that becomes your Teams app, your Outlook app, your M365 app. And again, as you say, if there's no resources for you to run anywhere and you can tap yep. into Microsoft Graph being the API to data and insights on Microsoft 365 or any other API that you might have in your org. So that is really, really cool. So Thanks again for showing us that ability and basically being able to, like that being available for everybody to use in their apps. Yep, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Baldi. And Aisha. Wow, that was an amazing session. And and this is the first time I'm seeing Vesa speaking in a technical term because he's usually the host. And now you're hosting him. <laughs> what an amazing time. Yeah. And he really still have his technical chops. It's not just PowerPoint. Exactly. He can do code. <laughs> exactly. We've seen that amazing session, amazing speakers. Olivia and Vesa rocked the session. And uh, I'm so looking forward to seeing other things they do. Don't forget to follow them on social. We have other stuff coming up, Baldek. That's not it. Definitely, definitely. So this is day one of week one. Let's be with week zero because we are devs. We count from zero. So this is week one, day one. Tomorrow, we will have another session which will be intro to Teams bots. And it's not just Teams bots. It's going to be the AI session of the whole hackathon. It's definitely one you don't want to <laughs> miss. We will have David Rousset. We will have Scott Hanselman, Sid Upal, and Joey Glock telling us all about Teams bots and how you can use AI in Microsoft Teams. So definitely don't miss it. Then on June 7, what is then? June 7th is our message extension time. And we will talk about all about message extensions. And our colleague Tomomi will be doing that session. And after that, we will dive into Microsoft Graph and how we can leverage from Microsoft Graph to Put, get some intelligence into our apps. Vesa mentioned it a little bit, but we will dive into more with our PMs joining the session and showing us hands-on how we can do that on Teams apps. And on June 12th, which is next week. As the experts, we'll have get together of all experts that we've got who are uh, in involved with Hackathon. That is basically that place and time for you to bring all questions you might have regarding building apps for teams, whether it's AI, whether it's bots, messaging, extension tabs, code space, whatever it is, bring it then because that is the chance for you to get your answers live. Yeah, and I feel like time flies so fast. And the final session we will have, which is not this Thursday, but next Thursday, June 15th, we will have wrap up and then we will learn a little bit about our community, how we can be a part of the community and learn more what we do. We do more than the hackathon. We have uh, community calls. We engage with others on different places. So um, you can be a part of it and learn more in our final session. And 
Finally, I also want to highlight, as Waldeck mentioned, tomorrow we will be again here at the same time with amazing speakers talking about Teams bots. And we will be showing you how you can integrate your bots with the latest announced at Build Teams AI library. So don't miss out this session. We have PMs, engineering leads, and Scott Hanselman, everyone joining us tomorrow to showcase, starting with the bots from scratch and then integrating Teams AI library into it. If you're interested in bots, we will be here right at the same time tomorrow. I guess that's all from us today. And thank you that so much for it. joining. Definitely. That is it. See you tomorrow, everybody. And again, if there's anything else, reach us reach out to us on ak.ms slash htt. Exactly. Thanks, everyone. See, see you tomorrow, everyone.